on antennas rather than $150,000 at a go. So uh, usually the BTS doesn't have a lot of information on it. So yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Uh, yes, people who are, the, the question was, are, are people who are still on call, do they stay up? Yes, the calls that exist, they're, they're existing channels, those don't get taken down. But um, people who try to make new calls, who have incoming SMS or incoming calls, that ceases to work. Um, so, right, this is, this is the, uh, this would be information on the cell that we have over here. It's actually, this is in uh, Hangzhou in China. It's not the correct information. If it was ARFCN 96, I could do this. Um, instead, it's 623, which is too high. So that's what we would be going after, but we're not. Um, does anyone want to see the software just kind of running and like dumping out output? It looks pretty awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah, let's do that. Right. I'm not very good with computers, so bear with me. Um, I need to... Uh, for the attacks or for my personal use? Uh, for the... <laughs> okay, uh, you can all see that. For, for the attacks, uh, it's a Motorola C123. You can also use the Motorola C118. They're actually identical boards inside. Uh, if you go on eBay now, they're probably going up in price like crazy. But um, yeah, grab these things, then you get a, another five euro cable. Uh, you should get the good ones that are USB, like this. And then it's this tiny little headphone jack actually that works. Right, so. Uh, okay. Oh, that looks kind of horrible. Okay, so we start up. Osmocom. Oops. All right. Bear with me one second. I have to get my demo set up better. Rachel minus A. Okay, so we're running Rachel, we're running our loader, and now the battery is dead, I bet you. Uh, all right. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so that's loading the firmware. And now it's trying to sync to the right ARFCN, and it's failing miserably. And here you can see it's not working at all when you get that error response 255. But if it was working, what you would see is loads of purple RACH request messages showing up. Um, what's failing right here is the sync request. It's trying to synchronize to the BTS, right? So unfortunately, um, let me just, I need to have at least 60 dBm on power for it to work, and I bet you it's running at like 90. Yeah, 92. So if we all go outside, and find where the tower is, and I can get close enough, then I can probably show you this attack. Uh, I'm actually attacking T-Mobile. AT&T doesn't have a GSM network, as far as I know. Um. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm actually based in Thailand, so I don't know a lot about the American networks. Um, They do, okay, all right. <laughs> there you go, okay. 
So they suck, basically. That's the take home message. All right. Um, we can go back to the other attacks, which are slightly more interesting. Uh, there's the MC detach I really want to show you guys, but unfortunately cannot. So, uh, the next one, which I'm hoping I can demo for the guy who's doing the MC catcher, is uh, MC flood. So, basically, what happens with the MC flood is you use the mobile phone to send a very, very large number of location updating requests with uh, a random MC value or basically an MC value that's not actually backed up by a real SIM card. And uh, this is all pre-authentication because what's happening is we're basically just sending our username, it's requesting a password from us, but we've gone already and we've sent another username, right? So um, the idea is that we want to try and overload the HLR or the VLR infrastructure and take down the network from uh, inside. So if we can knock over their databases internally, then we can prevent other people from associating on the network, making phone calls, or uh, making other usages of the network, right? So the idea is that if we can take down the back end, nothing else works. Um, once again, like the, the reason I actually developed this attack initially was the idea was that people who are going on uh, marches where they were going to be monitored by MC catchers would be able to carry basically a, a small phone like this that would be automatically flooding out a large number of uh, MC requests and that would either fill up or confuse the value of the logs within the, the MC catchers, basically to make that useless. So it was all like pro-anarchy, yay, black shirt stuff. But um, then I figured out I could actually take down a network instead, and that was even cooler. And I wouldn't piss off the police immediately. So all for that. Um, okay, MC flood. Um, once again, we use our evil attack phone. It sends an RA, like this does the full RACH, AGCH, LCH handshake. So this actually does open a channel. But then the message that it sends up, the location uh, update request, has bogus MC information in it, right? So it goes to the BTS, the BSC, back to the MSC, and then it hits either the VLR or the HLR. So we can, we can target that based on the MCC and the MNC, right? So if we're targeting uh, the T-Mobile network, we'd set the first five digits of our MC to 56026. Uh, if we were targeting at and it would be 560 dot whatever it is that they use. Um, probably FF will fucking fail. Um. <laughs> you, you need to open a new channel every single time. So the, the question was, can you reuse an existing channel? And unfortunately, you cannot. Uh, once you do the location update request, it will send back a ciphering request. So it'll say, if you really are who you say you are, you should be able to, you know, do this horrendously clever mathematical thing and use your, your known secret key. And we don't know that secret key. So we cannot actually continue on from there. So the, the uh, network state machine will try and get us to authenticate. We cannot authenticate, but we actually don't care. We're just trying to get them to, like, waste time. I mean, uh, theoretically, we could just send garbage ciphering information back, and it would have to do the computation itself, which is expensive, before it can figure out that we failed. All right? So the idea, once again, is uh, if we take out the VLR and the HLR, then no other SIM cards can actually use that network. So even though um, the rest of the network appears to be fine, the SIM card, like, basically, you still have signal, um, you still are able to like, you know, turn your phone off and on, do all that other stuff. The problem is you're unable to open a channel because when you do a location update request and it tries to go back to the back end, the back end is down. So even though you can open a channel, you can never authenticate on it and you can never do anything beyond that. Um, I haven't tried this one in the wild yet. Uh, I'm a bit scared to because like, I don't want to get arrested. But like I did implement it, it's kind of cool. And if the, the guy doing the MC catcher stuff is not using GSM 1900, I should be able to flood his talk. So come to his talk for my demo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll skip that. Um, the cool thing is, right, this is, um, right, so anyway, that's MC flood. Awesome stuff, cracking like uh, you can knock over um, a network using only a, a small number of phones and a laptop. Pretty awesome. Haven't actually tried it. It should work. Um, if we have a legitimate MC, can we do something much cooler? And the answer is yes. Yes, we can do something much cooler. 
Okay. So getting someone's MC is actually very, very easy. There's um, a lot of online spammers, uh, sorry, um, online systems that you can use for sending bulk SMS. And if you want to verify that the phone number that you have is a, a real phone number, they'll do HLR lookups for you. So you give them a batch of phone numbers and they will verify that these are real phone numbers that they're turned on and let you know back. They'll also give you additional information. For example, if you want the MCC and the MMC, that's just part of the MC, they'll give you the MC itself and uh, other information like this. This costs a sixth of one euro cent per phone number. So if you have someone's phone number, you can get their MC. And if you have their MC, you can keep them off the network. Okay? So what we can do is we can do what's called the MC detach attack. So um, what happened was the idea that was that when you turn your phone off, your phone notifies the network that it is no longer turned on and it cannot be reached. Right? Everyone's tried to call their wife while she's out shagging someone else and gotten the phone is like no longer available and off the hook. Right? Sorry. <laughs> or a similar situation like that, right? So, so everyone's familiar with trying to phone someone and their phone is not available, right? What causes that not available to trigger is actually that there's been an MC detach. So when the phone turns off, it sends a message to the network saying, I'm being switched off now, mark me as not available, right? The beauty of this is it's unauthenticated, right? You only send the one frame saying, I'm now turned off and it turns off immediately. Right? There's no, well, if you are who you say you are, you should be able to, like, turn on ciphering mode. Right? So this is written into the, the spec. Um, and what, what this attack does is it disables that particular SIM card from receiving uh, SMS or phone calls. Right? Uh, it was discovered by a Belgian guy, Sylvain Munard. And, um, yeah, he's very smart. He's been helping me with, like, uh, implementing some of this stuff. But, here we go, right? So what do we do? We take our evil attack phone. Um, we attach to the BTS, so we have to get a full channel for this one. It goes all the way through to the back end, and it informs the HLR, right? Tells the HLR that the phone has now been switched off. When that happens, the SIM card is now no longer on the network. So any phone calls or SMS that comes in is going to go to the HLR and say, where do I route this incoming information? The HLR goes, you can't he's not on the network, declined, right? Now, the, the beautiful thing about this is that the guy with the phone can still make phone calls and send SMS and see full signal, right? Because we're not interfering with any of that particular information. We're only telling the back end that he's been turned off. Um, what uh, Sylvain found out, actually, when he tested this uh, himself, was that when you do the detach attack, when you inform the HLR that the, uh, the phone has been switched off, it terminates any existing phone calls, right? So if you have this on a 30-second loop, just sending detach requests all the time, the guy will never be able to make a phone call that lasts more than 30 seconds, right? Like, it'll, it'll immediately cut him off. So... Does that packet have to come from the same BTS? No, it does not. It can, like, basically, because there's no security software in here at all to check for that information, Right? Like if they were intelligent, what they would do is they'd say, your last location update request came from Detroit. Now you're in, you know, Atlanta saying that you've been turned off. I think you're full of shit. Right? <laughs> they don't do that, no. Yes. So the question is, like, um, when someone like when someone starts to make a, an SMS or a phone call, do they get automatically reauthenticated? And the way that the GSM network is, is implemented is yes, they do. Every time that they open a channel, they have to authenticate against the network. And that authentication uh, is used to update the back end information in the HLR. So if we combine this with like taking down all of the network or any other thing, like we can interfere with that. But as it stands right now, you can target one individual. So if you have their phone number, you can kick them off the network. So this demo is going to be fucking awesome. I was just going to take someone's phone number and then kick them off. But once again, yeah, it, uh, it doesn't work. So if everyone could just imagine for a minute that their phone didn't work properly and you couldn't get phone calls and it wasn't because you were on AT&T, it was deliberate action, right? <laughs>